You know, Motorola's turned into a very odd company, and by extension, the Moto G Stylus for 2024 is a very odd phone. I, I really struggle to put it into a category. I struggle, I struggle to fit it into a mold that you have with other smartphones, and that's possibly by design. I had an article come out the other day for Android, please, saying it's almost like the Motorola software issue or lack of software support is on purpose because they're kind of relying on and hoping for casuals to buy their phones. You know, they're more interested in style than performance, perhaps, or, or software or, or new features and stuff like that. They're just hoping that the looks and the style and the pricing and all the rest of, of their devices carries them through, and that might be a strategy. I personally still think that unless you're offering a steep discount on your devices that you should get software updates and a certain amount of software coverage regardless, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. This is really the Moto G Stylus after one month and as expected you're getting some rather aggressive carrier discounts i mean at&t you can pick this up right now three dollars a month with a qualifying offer that's bill credits over 36 months but if you're a casual you know you're going to pick up this phone you're not worried about that you're not switching from at&t in the next three years so you could pay three bucks a month and get yourself a brand new phone also metro pcs is giving it away with a new with a new uh, new line so you could get that this for free right now with activation through metro pcs so it's kind of an odd mix of a phone as well, feature-wise. Because, And I'm, I'm dealing with this. I'm, I'm reviewing the Motorola Edge for 2024 for Android, please, currently. And I've noticed this the last couple of years. Their upfront pricing is weird. Uh, you know, the 400 I don't really mind for the Moto G Stylus. The Motorola Edge 600 I do mind. The processor in this thing, the Snapdragon 6 Gen 1, is fine. It's good enough, but it's certainly not a powerhouse. It's not more, you, you know, you could get more powerful phones for $400. So that's really not where Motorola put the stock in the phone. It's more in other things that do kind of tilt it towards the perfect phone for casuals. Why do I say that? Display, front and center, gorgeous display, something that you look at 100% of the time. You don't have to be an enthusiast or know anything about phones to know that this is a gorgeous display. Design goes along with that. The eco leather is fantastic. It feels great. It feels like a premium phone for 400 bucks. I really like that. The cameras are good enough. You know, it has that moto saturation that they've started to add. It's kind of like an old school Samsung photo, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to link at the end of this video my a full review of this guy that has those photo images. But it does have, it has, it's kind of a rich, saturated image. But I don't mind. It plays well on social media. I like that. I understand it's not reality what you're looking at. But sometimes you want your photos a little pumped up or punched up. And that's how we remember things anyway. You have creature comforts, fan favorites, headphone jack right here. You've got the micro SD card expandable storage. Things that you like at a certain price point that are fan favorites and crowd pleasers, but not necessarily items like software support, like some of these other things that hardcore enthusiasts are going to be into. So that's the, the kind of balance that I think Moto is trying to strike. And if that's the case, then you know what? I, I like this phone. I mean, I liked it from the beginning. But now that I kind of understand, as I've seen other devices, as I've seen the new Ra Razer Plus, as I've seen the Motorola Edge, it's kind of clear because it, it's always been weird, like I said, putting Moto devices into a box. They never really fit into the other boxes like Google, like Samsung, like even the iPhone. They never really hit those targets that people usually hit in the checklist that you have on these smartphones. Motorola never fit into that. So it seems like they're just going for people who just want a phone that works, want a phone that works well. It's going to do everything that you ask of it and absolutely nothing more. And if you're looking for monthly feature drops or you're looking for those patch notes the first Monday of every month when an update comes out, this is not going to be the phone for you. This is going to be the phone that Moto hopes that you walk into your AT&T carrier. I don't want an iPhone. I don't want to pay 25 bucks a month for an S series. I don't want to pay, you know, Google's kind of goofy. I don't necessarily like that phone. It's kind of a quirky design. I want a classically nice looking smartphone that has a beautiful display and does everything I need it to do. And I want it to be cheap or relatively inexpensive. And this one, if those are your metrics, this one checks every single box for that. Love the design, like I said. Cameras are good enough. Performance is good enough. Everything's good enough. RAM, 8 gigs of RAM, helps you out here. Those are all things that you love. Beautiful. And I can't get over the display. The display, if you look at it, every time I pick up this phone, and I just look at the colors and the saturation and just how bright it is, it's just a gorgeous display at this price point. 
especially if you're spending three bucks a month, if you're getting it for free through a carrier. This is a gateway phone that gets you in the door. This is a door buster. And I can live with that because, you know, you don't have to be an enthusiast to like these phones. You don't have to be somebody that, that's looking for Gemini Nano or all the rest of it. You know, Moto AI is coming to the newer devices. Will it come to this? I don't know. Probably not. But Moto doesn't care. They're like, okay, well, buy the buy the next one next year. Trade this in or whatever. When your contract is up in 18 months or you can, you're eligible to upgrade, you could go ahead and buy the next one. But if you pick this up for anything less, you know, any sort of discount off that $400, $399, I liked it. I liked it just because the overall package, I think, is pretty good. But when you factor in those carrier discounts and what people are realistically buying these phones for, they become phenomenal deals. Phenomenal deals. And if you go back and look at the comments of the reviews I've done on this phone, almost universally well received. Everybody who's actually sat down and used one absolutely loves it. As long as you go in understanding that it's not going to be like your Google phone experience, like your Pixel experience, like your Samsung experience. It's not that kind of phone. It's not that kind of show. So if you kind of go in with it, with it like I said, the casual mentality that I'm just going to pick up this phone. I like the way it looks. I like the way it performs. I love the display. Watching content on it is great. Gaming on it is good enough. If you go in with that mentality, you're going to absolutely love this, and you pick up the stylus as well for a significant discount to something like the S24 Ultra. So you really have to be in that right mindset of buyer to appreciate the Moto G stylus for 2024. But if you are, you're getting yourself a classically good-looking phone, a well-performing phone, a phone that's going to have all the bells and whistles, at least right now. You're going to get it. I like Hello UI, Hello UX, or whatever it is. I happen to like the refresh. I think Moto is in dire need of a refresh. They, it, it feels like they've been going with the my, uh, with my UX since the, 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 the Moto X in, in 2013 or whatever like that. It feels like it had, their software had not changed in that time. So there needed something needed to happen. I understand people are a little bit disappointed that it's more heavily skinned than it used to be. But you know what? Too bad. Because it needed something. So I was tired of looking at that circle. I was tired of looking at it. Oh, every time I picked up a motor phone, I was tired of looking at it. I wish that now, now that we're getting always on display for the Razer Plus products this year, I wish that would trickle down to here, but it's probably not. Because that's their deal now. It does, you know, updates and whatever else, not really a thing. What is here you're going to get? If you like it, great. If you don't, well, buy the one next year. Seems to be the kind of motor age. But I love the suite. I understand it's not Bluetooth. I understand no air command, all the rest of it. But let me tell you something. This thing is really nice to write on. You got Moto Note, screenshot, freeform crop. You got the gift maker, which I think is underrated. I wish that was included in the sweet thing for, for other phones. Had a cut there for a moment because I accidentally showed somebody's telephone number in the Note app. But I actually use it. That's why. You know, I, I go around here, and it's, it's just the, the amount, this, almost the same amount of, time, uh, of usage I get out of my S Pen. I pull this open, goes right to the note app, jot down somebody's number, jot down a quick note or reminder that you need, and it's a really nice, smooth experience on the display. I, I like it overall. I, I think you're getting an incredible deal here. I, I think if you pick one up, if you take advantage of those discounts like a lot of people have, you're really getting yourself a nice device. And now that I'm able to kind of... I, you know, I still wish they updated. I, I put that in the article. I still wish they'd offer more support because these phones can take it. These uh, these phones can be updated. They have enough power. They have enough RAM. It would be nice for people to be comfortable with them for years. But you know what? These are just carrier discount specials. P pay your three bucks. And if you want more updates or by the time security updates are done in three years, well, guess what? Pick up the next one for three bucks. That type of deal. So as long as you can live with that, as long as you kind of wrap your head around that and make your peace with the fact you're not going to be getting the latest and greatest and, you know, Android 15, which is promised for this thing, may come sometime in 2030. As long as you can accept that, then I think you're really going to enjoy your Moto G stylus experience because I certainly have, as long as you have that that right uh, frame of mind going in when you walk into your AT&T store and slap, you say, give me that, give me this Moto for three bucks. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have the Steve Delicious day.